from Reinhardt College in Waleska, Georgia, this is Renewing American Civilization. In this, the ninth of ten class presentations, Congressman Newt Gingrich, an adjunct professor at Reinhardt College, will continue his course, which presents the foundational principles necessary to the renewal of American civilization. This week's lesson, Replacing the Culture of Poverty and Violence, focuses on replacing the culture of poverty and violence with the culture of productivity and safety. We welcome everyone this morning, and in particular welcome the students of Mind Extension University who are joining us uh, by television. Let me remind them that uh, you can mail your comments to Renewing American Civilization. Post Office Box is 6008 in Marietta, Georgia, 30065. Or you can fax your comments to 404-528-9806. Or you can email your comments to America Online, uh, renewam at aol.com. You can get class transcripts and other class materials on the internet web page, http colon uh, double slash www.pff.org. Uh, and you can order American Civilization, the newspaper, and video and audio tapes and course readings by calling 1-800-2-RENEW. And I'd remind everybody that the last, which seems so obvious, would have been impossible 50 years ago, and probably our grandchildren will regard all those except the computer uh, online as sort of irrelevant. The five pillars of American Civilization are first, the historic lessons of American Civilization, second, personal strength, third, entrepreneurial free enterprise, Fourth, the spirit of invention and discovery. And fifth, quality as described by Edwards Deming. And we are applying these five pillars to four areas. The third wave uh, and American civilization. How will the information age affect us? Second, creating jobs, American jobs in the world market. Third, replacing the culture of violence and poverty with a culture of productivity and safety. And fourth, citizenship and community in 21st century America. Now, today's topic is actually the third of those four topical areas, replacing the culture of poverty and violence with a culture of productivity and safety. And if you'll notice, we describe this in a very specific way, which I'll come back to, but that is a replacement of a culture with another culture. So it's not just helping the poor or focusing on the inner cities or uh, anything narrow, but this is literally a discussion about two cultures. We start this analysis with a belief that the current welfare system has failed. And this is at the heart of it, that, that the system we're currently paying tax money to pay for uh, has simply not achieved the results we want. In fact, I would assert that no civilization can survive with 12-year-olds having babies, 15-year-olds killing each other, 17-year-olds dying of AIDS, and 18-year-olds getting diplomas they can't read. And these are not just apocryphal sort of things. But if you watch your local evening news, you know that every one of these tragedies is happening in America today. This particular session is based on the premise that efforts to repair or improve the current welfare system are doomed to fail because they misunderstand the holistic nature of the problem. Now, holistic is an important word for, I'm going to take just a second. Uh, in a holistic model, everything inside the model has to be taken into account. Whereas in a reductionist model, you can break it down into a series of building blocks and you can say, okay, which of these do we want to deal with first? <coughs> it's a very big difference between the two. In this model, the holistic model, every piece depends on the other pieces. And so if you don't deal with the totality, it doesn't work. In this model, the pieces can be fixed independently of each other. Now, we're going to come back to this in a minute, but I, I, I want to start with the notion that the very first problem is that it is the system and the culture which are the problems. And that piecemeal efforts to repair the system and its culture of poverty and violence are therefore irrelevant and doomed to fail. So that every time we say, well, let's do a specific small piece because at least we will make progress. No, 
The answer is you'll have no impact at all, or virtually no impact. Because let's, let's say we'll go in and we'll say, okay, we're going to really work on four-year-olds in Head Start. That's fine. When they are eight-year-olds in the same culture of poverty and violence that they were in back when they were four-year-olds, but now they're outside of the environment of Head Start, they start to revert very rapidly. Not because Head Start wears off, which is what people said at one time, but because the power of a culture to attract you, to say this is, this is what cultures do is they tell you this is the right behavior. This is the thing you'll be rewarded for. This is the thing people will praise you for. And so what happens is the culture of poverty and violence is so powerful that if all you do is try to change one piece of it, the whole rest of it will come back in. We say, why don't you go to work? And you say, fine. And so we create up here the work program. What we don't do is check and find out that if you go to work, you lose Medicaid. So the minute you go to work, you lose Medicaid. One of your children gets sick. You promptly lose all the money you just worked for. All of your neighbors then laugh at you. You, got, you were a sucker. Why did you go do that? If you just sat, you know, if you just stay at home, don't worry about it. Why do you keep listening to all these people who try to improve you? So what you have is an interlocking system in which both the structure of rewards, and by the system part of this is, what is it that actually happens when you engage in behavior? You go tell the police something. Are you better off or are you more likely then to be shot or beaten up or killed for having squealed? Are the police capable of protecting your house or are the police incapable of protecting you? Are you better off to keep your mouth shut and not be a target? We had a girl in Washington, D.C. who dropped out of school because uh, she witnessed a stabbing. And the girls who participated in the stabbing were saying they, will, they would kill her if she talked to the police. So she's cross-pressured between the police and her parents saying, gee, why don't you do the honest thing? And her immediate peers saying, why don't we just kill you if you do the honest thing? Now, to change any one piece of this without thinking through the change of the whole piece doesn't get you anywhere. So, we have to start, I think, by looking at four key realities which define any solution to the problems of violence and poverty. Reality one is that when individuals are caught within a dysfunctional culture, they must transfer their loyalties, beliefs, and behaviors to another culture to truly change their behavior. This is why if you look at Al-Anon or Alcoholics Anonymous or any of those programs, they are a conversion experience. They say, yesterday I was an active alcoholic, today I am a recovering alcoholic. Yesterday when I felt anxiety ridden, I took a drink. Today when I feel anxiety ridden, I go to my AA's meeting and talk to my friends, or I pray, or I, but, but there's a conscious effort to rebuild the entire person and to recognize that the transition from this system to another system is a decisive moment. And if you don't have a support structure, if you don't have something which helps you when you start to slide back, you're going to break down. The, the folks at Covenant House, which is a, the leading Catholic program for, for girls who have run away or who are pregnant, teenagers who need help, uh, they have a rule that you have to work from day one. They also talk about the, the, the inevitable Tuesday syndrome. And they say what happens to every person is, there comes the Tuesday morning, they don't want to go to work. They, either they got in an argument with their boss, or they don't feel very good, or they're just depressed, or whatever. That they really need a hand that reaches out at that point, and talks to them, and nurtures them, and carries them across their depression. Or they break down and they leave. 